Enough time has passed. We have all grown to be mighty warriors. But at long last, we're finally back to do another podcast. It's Ecast on Twitch. And this week, we're getting kind of lazy. But we're going to run wild. We're going to run wild with Scissors as we talk about Scissor 7. But of course, I'm getting ahead of myself. I am your host, the man who's into Stranger Things, Eric McIron Fist. And with me, as always, is Bojack yeah, Horseman funny. himself, 8 Star Kaijin. Why did you do that to me? And rounding out our staple, it's the toys that made him, Robot Hobo 64. Welcome, welcome. You like Thank those, you for having me. You like those Netflix show name jokes? Ha <laughs> ha! Honestly, I'm Robo coming. got the best. Honestly, Robo got the best one because that's a really good show to watch. Because Season Seven's on Netflix, but again, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We gotta slow down a bit, and we gotta talk about our weeks. So, how are we all doing tonight? I'm fine. How are you? Little peeve. Uh, OBS was giving me a lot of shit today. And we almost didn't end up doing the stream at all. Actually, we were going to do a audio-only uh, recording and just put that up on YouTube. But no, OBS decided to work at the last minute, but I just got so tired. So this week, normally on the podcast, I usually have a little screen up there showing, you know, giving examples of what the show looks like, etc., etc. This week, we're handicapping ourselves because I don't feel like doing that this time after dealing with OBS and all that bullshit. But otherwise, I'm fine. Robo? That's for me. Just been enjoying the 4th of July weekend. Some good mm. cookouts, chicken burgers, and all that. Yeah. And Giving praise to the only three guys who matter. Yes. Captain America. Uh, if, you're, if you're a good boy, uh, Steve Rogers will come to your house and give you apple pie. I'm hurt. I was referring to... Charging Star. I'm hurt. I was talking about the USA sports team. <laughs> The uh, team, actually, the team whose theme we come out to every week as we walk down the entrance ramp. Oh, bitch! It's like every two weeks. Eat a dick. Anyway, um, actually, it's fitting that he completely forgot about them. <laughs> Damn, are you so right? That is on brand. Give me some time. Well, I'll have more SNK knowledge. More. <laughs> no, than... you won't. Oh, not for now. not not for the sports team. They don't deserve it yet. No, they do. But fuck them. But yeah, other than that, uh, thanks to Eight, I got me a new capture card. Which don't tell me with me. But I want to thank you. They'll think I'm you... your sugar daddy. No. They already think they're your sugar daddy. Bitch. <laughs> look, look, we already, we already are so much buddy, buddy. I'm, I'm gonna appreciate my fellow man, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a give you the proper kudos you deserve. Yes. Anyways, let's get into a bit of the news this week, and uh, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but let me just get this piped in. The FGC is dying. No, stop. Oh, God, I wasn't ready for this. We already talked about this. Yeah, but now I'm talking about live. Yeah, uh, a lot of shit just exploded yeah. over the weekend. People come out as monsters and assholes. Sex pests, pedophiles, just bad people all around. The worst. And a lot of smashers, too. Like, like, the list is so huge. It's full of names. I have no idea who these people are. Uh, unfortunately, same. Yeah. Just, it's and so terrible. And now it's gotten to the point that Evo, it might actually be dead, dead. It's been canceled this year. Originally, they were planning on reviving it by taking it online with a bunch of games that barely had good netcode in it to begin with. But now it's all just dead. Mr. Wizard's out. They got some new guy in. And the name is just going to be irreparably damaged for years to come. Look, the FGC will be fine. Yeah, because... we dramatize. It'll be fine, but... This just... is a good thing. Yes, it is. Because now we're getting all the snakes out of the grass. We can rebuild. Skeletons out of the closet. We can re we can rebuild him. He will be faster, stronger, smarter. And he'll be also, with the cooler skeletons. But also affirm that uh, people should not put their too too much stock in people who like provide entertainment. It's yeah. don't look up to, don't look up to us. We've got we're probably not great. 
look, people are flawed, but like, not everyone's a monster though. So. Yes. Also, um, fucking more importantly, uh, I'm really glad people are coming out about it. Yes, a lot of like not even. I've also noticed that even some people in the Mugen community are coming out about it too so it's not just the fgc itself it's all the small outliers too and to everyone who's coming out we salute you you're doing it's i i can imagine it's not easy to open up about these kind of sensitive topics and to everyone who 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 like never did anything like that you're not to blame sometimes it's just not sometimes we're just put in a situation it's not easy to get out of also like for someone who's like fucked in the head but they haven't done anything get help yeah well seek help don't say get help that's kind of ruder you know well you know that's a fair point i didn't mean it like that yeah but, you obviously know what I mean. but like, just seek catch. help please <laughs> don't let it get don't let it get bad and like you make a horrible like decision that'll affect everyone around you for the rest of your life yeah because you know what will so, happen you're, you're gonna you'll just end up tearing your ass like x-pac is that That's worth a... it? <laughs> fucking jumping on the turnbuckle. You're jumping on the turnbuckle of life, boy, and you're not going off Brett's rope of the double axe handle on this one. No, you decided to go full on Bronco Buster, and now you're paying for it. Can we turn that into a coffee pasta just between us? I mean, this podcast is already just inside the Iron Fist inside joke hour. I I just realized you put in fucking Spongebob music. It just processed. (laughs) Is it fitting or not? Um, it might be a little distasteful, not gonna lie. Yeah, this probably, I'll probably, I'll just cut this one for now. Should probably put in normal, just like SNK music, like. I want to mix it up though, you know? I'll put in the 98 OST. Not for this situation. Look, it, the whole thing is bad. Everyone's coming out this strong. Gotta get the snakes out of the grass so we can rebuild, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. So, one good thing is that eventually, you know, when everything calms down and we like have a little bit, run the fucking. If anyone wants to run a public tournament again, like like on the scale of Evo, we you know we chill the fuck out. We get uh, pay, start thinking with our heads, and for one thing, fucking ban liquor. Or alcohol being sold on the premises while minors are present. And if anyone has, work- and don't forget, if someone has a allegedly sketchy past, they should not be anywhere near it either. What? Like, okay, just a quick reminder. How about how the how the actual fuck did they allow selling alcohol there for so long? I mean, ironic I considering no you know, idea. usually isn't most of those events sponsored by Red Bull? You'd be thinking it's just like, oh hey, here's your competitive pack of Red Bull for your esports. Yeah, drink this caffeine energy sauce. Don't get drunk and do terrible, regrettable shit. This. You know, I will say to, um... it does bring it it's funny that we mention this now because in one of our first podcasts, oh god, we actually talked about uh, infiltration and how everyone in the, you know, everyone in Evo welcomed him back with open arms, even though he allegedly beat his wife. And then we found out he did beat his wife. And everyone that welcomed him back had their own set of skeletons. Jeez, let's move on from this. We made our point. What else is there in the news that we could actually talk about? Fucking nothing. The virus has shut down a lot of bullshit. Let's not talk Anything. about the virus. Come on. It's a fact. It fu- it's the reason why Evo especially was headed towards disaster. Okay. Yeah. So, let's talk about what we did for the week. Fuck, man. Come on. Oh, you mean... Oh, we're just gonna get right into it now? I mean, yeah. Well, first, let me put in the proper music, then. Fuck new sessions for po- uh, sections for podcasts. Yeah. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. God damn it! Skip. All right, so <laughs> let's talk about this week's topic. No, Scissor no, no. Set. I meant like our weeks, or like what we did last week. Oh, uh, we didn't podcast last week. We just streamed. No. What did we do for fun? What are we doing in our lives? We already went over that. We just had an okay week. 
I've been working on my characters. Oh, and wait. I forgot to talk about my week. Then go ahead, Sally. I revived my PSP from the dead. How so? How was it even broken? What'd you do? Uh, it just had a dead battery, so I gave it a new one and a charger. Wow, that's it? It's been dead for years. I never thought to buy another battery. I'm a dingus. You really are, you fucking silly man. Man, there's so much cool music I had for, on there that I didn't even know I had. Fucking. I was a cool kid back in the day when I wasn't a complete fucking shit. Complete utter shithead. Uh, Citation needed. Damn, now that makes me wish I could get my 3DS running back again since that thing's been dead since like 2016. And I've had that old model 3DS since the thing launched back in like 2010 or 2011. My fucking PSP died in, like back in 2013. Oof. Well, oh. you could you could be me and my P. I went through like three freaking PSPs, man. Um, oh, I've only had to go through the one, and the analog stick still works. Eat a dick. My first one was has cr screen cracked because it fell on the ground. The second one just freaking died. I forgot exactly the specifics why. And now I'm on my third replacement one, and now I'm being careful on this one because oh god. My original, my original PSP still works, it's just that my brother got a later model, so I just swiped that from him. And in other, uh, what else I did that, uh, I spent the entire week watching Space Runaway Ideon, an anime that inspired Evangelion and was written by Yoshiyuki Tomino, the creator of the Gundam series. What a fucking ride. You wanna tell us more about it? Well, okay. So, it's kind of like the plot for Get a Robo. Um, similarly enough, there's like a fight between two races, two humanoid race species, the Buff Clan, and, you know, just like Earth humans. Oh, right, I remember these. I remember these names. Yeah. So, they find uh, a robot called the Ideon, uh, the Earth humans do, and also a gigantic ship. And, long story short, Buff Clan wants a big weapon that, does, that goes boom. They want that big damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, unfortunately, the robot is possessed by a, uh, a um, strange space entity that is uh, subtly coercing both sides to fight each other uh, in an attempt to reincarnate the universe and undo its past sins. Mm. It was okay. I don't like it, but it wasn't the worst thing I've watched. And I can see why people love it. Also, it has one of my, the, my like, two, a really good opening, a really good ending. One of my favorite character designs ever for the main character, who's just the main protagonist of Gundam with a gigantic fucking orange afro who chucks knives at people. I, st I distinctly remember seeing that character design in a Space Dandy parody. One, that one episode where all the other dandies convene. Yeah, good. Um, the, mmm... It does that Evangelion thing where, like, it got cancelled, so it had to have a movie to finish out the series. Ouch. Wait, that's what happened to Evangelion? Well, you know, they didn't get proper funding because one of the episodes was too similar to a recent terrorist attack at that Ooh, point in time. Right. So they had to scrap the episodes, and then Anno went into a huge depression, he's like, oh, fuck, what am I gonna do? And then, you know, they managed to pick the ball up, uh, pick a, uh, sorry, pick up the ball after dropping it very hard. Not their fault, but... So then they made an of Evangelion, and that was the proper ending to the series. Gotcha. But for Yoshiyuki Tomino, <sighs> he, uh, he ended the series, and it was the ending for the TV show was like, um, I'm just going to say abrupt, where it's just like, oh, and then the universe restarted. Ha ha! Was there yeah. giant sex to kickstart it? No, there was instead a flying naked baby that was born from the two races mixing. Damn, oh, wait, I was so hoping for a Crisis Young. <laughs> So, wait, then it's like, what is it, the fetus of God from Darkstalkers 3? No, no, it's like a normally fully formed baby, and it's just flying through the, through the stars with green hair. Oh, so, it's Time Baby from Gravity Falls. Um, yeah. and then the, and, the <laughs> and that was how the show ended first with, on TV, and then the second, and then the movie comes out, and it's like, ah, now you get to see it all over again. There were, there were uh, two compilation movies, and the last one is them just like, now you can see how everyone was supposed to properly die. 
Wow. Ooh, that, that's, that sounds rough. That's edgy. They really, they really waste a lot of time, but I mean, like, it has a point. It's just that the way they execute it, to me personally, was really fucking stupid. Oh! They keep doing this fucking thing where, like, ah, what is this character doing that's suddenly got it, getting a lot of development in this one particular episode? Why do we get to see his family? Is he gonna adopt? Yes. Oh no, are they gonna do a fucking The Last of Us 2 on us? Where we oh have God, to see like, the fucking flashback <laughs> before they die? There's this one character named Moida. He's the third pilot. Like, he's the third, like, named pilot for the, for the mech. And he never, he, okay, he's not even, he's so unimportant to the show, he's not even in the fucking opening credits. And, and Wow. The, <laughs> that's dirty. He has entire episodes where he says nothing or doesn't even appear on screen. And what? Then, yeah, and then, <laughs> and then suddenly when the show decides he's important, they, they have give him, him the biggest bombshell. Oh my god, they have him. They have him. There's this little shit kid who's like kind of a pussy. And he's like, uh, I don't, I'm scared. And he's like, you gotta man the fuck up. And the nurse taking care of him is like, oh man, look at Moida fucking scolding that child to be a better man, to be a man. <laughs> Quit being a wiener, child. I don't care that your family died. That's life. And she goes, man, Moida gets me so wet with his confidence. <laughs> and Moida, who has established that he hates the fact that the robot is coercing everyone to kill each other, goes, you know what? Fuck it. Sometimes fate is a good thing. And he's like, goodbye. Uh, the nurse's name is Rappo, and the kid's name is Bart. Fa like Guapo? Rappo. Not like El Guapo, but Rappo. <gasps> Oh, I got excited. <laughs> and then, and then he's like, "Good luck, kiddo. I'll see you later, Rappo. I'll uh, when we get back. Have a good time." And then, before Bart, Bart has his little doll and he gives it to Moira, and he's like, "Here, and take it. I don't need it anymore." He's like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Wow, if this character doesn't die, this is gonna be a fucking great episode." No, no. Jeez. Because the only way you can have a character-centric episode on a background is if they kick the bucket. Yo, let me ask oh you my... this. Does he wear red? Um, no. So he he's wears, not a like, red shirt, huh? He, he wears the, like, lamest brown color. And the same as, like, every other fucking, like, drone worker on the ship. He's like, oh, hey, I wear brown. I'm gonna get killed in the next episode. So, Not before I tell you my dramatic and sad backstory. Oh my god, he doesn't get that. Get that. He doesn't even get that. When he dies, there's entire episodes where they don't even bring him up. Until <laughs> like the Jesus, this, has, this guy has to be the most dirtily done character in anime. Oh my god, there's a character in the movie who gets shot in the head and he goes, I didn't even get a chance to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we gotta... We're hitting the 20 minute mark, I think. Oh, God, I think we should pivot into our. Oh, wait, wait, main... before I. One last thing. Okay, fine, last tangent. Go. Uh, the robot has inconsistent, like, body, like, battle damage, so does the ship. Uh, they can't be able to. They don't fucking think for five seconds to check if there's a, sh a goddamn tracker on their ship whenever they go into light space. So whenever they get found by the enemy, they blame it on the alien woman. Uh, that they're work that they're that's with them instead of the like the possibility that maybe they got a tracker put on them, fucking dumbasses. They're like Spider-Man villains. And then okay, then there's this one scene where the alien woman and the head scientist on the ship get into a slapping contest. <laughs> slap boxing. They slap each other for six fucking seconds on loop. I shit so, you wait, not. Wait. Is that like that scene in Final Fantasy VII where Tifa and that one chick just have a slap yeah, contest? Yeah, I think that's where it's from, actually. Type Damn. in Eon Slap Robot. Not you, Prince, but just type it up. No, nope, I'm gonna look up myself. Movie. Fuck it. Eon Slap. Reverse psychology, kiddo. Yes, there is his first GIF. Look at it, look at it. Bam. Bam. Ah, ah, Bam. Ah, Wait, hold ah, on. Ah. I can do it right now. And it happens over the dumbest shit. <laughs> well, well, okay, him... to end the tangent, why are they slapping? Okay, so the alien woman named Kara Karara. Which one is she? Pink or black hair? She is the character in with uh, dark blue hair in the white and green outfit. All right. And Cheryl is the name of the scientist who's slapping her. Fucking, fucking Karara proves that she's not a fucking traitor and that she actually cares about joining with them when uh, a member of her own race 
points a gun at Cheryl, and Carla says, "Fuck you! I'm I will I won't let you kill her." And she stands directly in front of her to take the bullet. And the dude's like, "Well, fuck, fuck this shit. I'm out. I ain't gonna. I'm not about to shoot an important member of my fucking uh, of my fucking race. I don't want that kind of heat." <laughs> and then he walks away. And then Cheryl's like, "I don't trust. I still don't fucking trust you." And then uh, what a bitch. and Carla says. That's so like you to say that. And she just kind of smiles. And then Cheryl slaps her, and that's what causes the slapping. But Damn. it goes on for way too long, and it's fucking hilarious. How long does it go on for? Can Six you give us. A... I was expecting longer. That's not that long. I was thinking like a minute of just. No, uh... no word, nothing. Just drum, like super dramatic music playing, and they're just like. Eh, 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 eh. God. It's, it's the fact that it's a loop, and that's what bothers me. <laughs> I mean, at least it's not a... Well, might be the GIF. But, oh God, there's another slapping GIF! Oh, Yo, know, on the, on the Tracer thing, give 60s Spider-Man villains some credit, especially in, like, the animated series. Like, Electro and I think... Who are those two duos? It was, like, The Fly or something like that. Okay, well... Like, I want, I'll give it's not about the Spider Traders. Spider Tracer and use no, no, it against that's, them, remember? That's fair, that's fair, that's fair. The Spider Tracers are super small. But the fucking Tracers they find on the ship are literally like the size... Oh, okay. you have your, everyone have their palm out right now? Yes. Yes. It's as big as your hand. Wow. It, and it's just sitting there and they're like, What's this thing? Oh, and they think it's a part of the ship despite the fact that not, they've never... <laughs> It's like so ink. It's like it's like deep blue, and it contrasts with the design of the ship so much that you would never think it was a part of the ship. Like they like they're in the future. They know what a tracker is. Jesus Christ. Okay, I think we've we're all idioted out. Yeah, me too. Okay, but let's get to our main topic, and I will lead us in as always. So as we discussed on the last podcast, uh, actually the second to last podcast, last podcast was about Blaster Knuckle, we found out that France is producing some of the best anime with the likes of Crisis Young. Yeah, Jesus. Tur- Petite Jesus, you mean. But as it <laughs> turns out, China is on the rise. Uh... uh China's on the rise in terms of animation. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, yes, Donghua, as it's more colloquially known amongst its fans, is really starting to get there. I've seen a lot on various stream services, mainly in China and fan subs. But the point is, it's getting out there, and it's finally getting to a point where it's getting on mainstream services like Netflix. Does that mean where we we'll see Tiger anime eventually? <sighs> no, unfortunately not. There are okay. I've done some minor research into Donghua, and as it's called. And uh, it's been around pretty much forever since it's just, you know, their word for animation. So in essence, you know, anything animated is Donghua. But basically, yeah, it's been around for a while, but... And there are adaptations, but normally it's of the more modern, recent webcomics and uh, various novels over there. Like how anime adapts fucking light novels and shit. Yeah, it's a a marketing strategy. It works. But anyways, China... Skin stepping up its game in the animation, and sea even s- I wish. The thing is, Sea Tiger is too, it's too, oh, it's too obscure in today's world. Okay, fun fact from my friend who, uh, as we've discussed before, has worked on Manhua himself. A lot of Manhua is supported by older fans. All the kids like their anime and shit. It's sad, I know, but anyways. It brings us to Netflix, and a while back, a show came on by the name of Scissor 7. Now, I didn't... What the hell was that? Oh, I was going to start doing the theme in the background with the Tic Tac box. No! Let me see if I can find the OST real quick. But anyways, a while back, something was circulating on Twitter. A screenshot from some new cartoon on Netflix that had characters that were basically Kyo and Iori from King of Fighters. That's pretty much how we all found I found it. I guess we can all agree on, right? Yes. Agreed. So yeah. But 
Then I saw a trailer for it, and I found it was called Scissor 7. And it was a brand new anime up on uh, Netflix. Well, okay. I'm Okay, to the people from the Donghua server I'm in, if you're watching this, I am sorry. You're going to have to deal with my stuttering. It's going to be really bad. But anyways... Oh, it's, there is the OST on here. I'll just play that instead of fucking yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it. Dynasty Warriors, <laughs> Romance of the Three Kingdoms music. Yeah, or you could get Wu Lin, Wu Lin. No, that's the next pod. No, that's our next podcast topic. We need to watch that. Yeah, I'm fucking down for that after the stream. Sean no, Shell I kind of want about pizza. Oh, oh. I, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch! How dare you bring you that know up? What I'm talking about. Uh, oh, pizza. God. No scar. There's no such thing as a pizza or damn. We're going off on a tangent. Fuck. Maybe the music will keep us on track. Here we go. All right. So Scissor Seven, a short form series up on Netflix from China. Uh, eight. How about you tell us what it's about? Why don't you start us off? An amnesiac assassin uh, takes on jobs to kill people and make ends meet. <laughs> and also to figure out his memories uh, while assisted by his chicken friend his other chicken friend who's on his right in the key art yeah and his uh, let's see his name is Lo Chi or uh, Seven and uh, his, his buddy over there is actually it's on his shirt it's on his jacket right there the characters for Six and Seven right there and uh, let's see uh, Dian Bao his, uh, his manager slash chicken buddy one of the glasses just for and, visual folks. Uh, uh, I think his name is Xiao Fei, the uh, little yeah. chicken on the, le- on the right. Or left? Fuck. Wait. Well, I posted a picture in podcast, te- cast pot text. Why don't you just use that? Wait. My left, Xiao Fei. My right, Yan Bao, if I got that right. Yes, so, I got the wiki up, so we got all the names. Uh, they just get into various shenanigans where uh, Seven doesn't kill anybody, but he, like, he either A, gets the job done, B, gets the job done kind of right, or C, ends up in a situation that was completely unexpected as a result of him being unwilling to kill someone. And along the way, we find out more and more about his mysterious past. Yes. Uh, as, we so, make, as he makes friends, enemies, rivals, etc. Uh, and also, the soundtrack is amazing. Yes, that's what you're hearing right now, since, thank God I found that. So, where do we start on talking about this? Uh, I guess I should say this now. Spoiler. Uh, what can we talk about in terms of the show before we get into spoilers? The look. Yes. Unfortunately, because this week I decided to be lazy and not do any screen caps. Whoops. You're going to have to take my word for it. I told you to screen cap it as we were watching it. I knew this would happen. <laughs> look, sometimes it's hard to do it because... Look, every now and then I'm gonna get just super lazy, okay, man? I'm only fucking human. I understand, and that's why I'll help you screen cap next time. Yes. But, uh, the show has a, I wanna say kind of a, like, they get, it's very, on the outset, it's kind of Mob Cycle 100-ish, if y'all have seen no. that. What? It's, it's, uh, it's a lot more flat than that. Um. Well, hmm. What would you de- what would you compare it to then? Has like the feel of like a you know those like spinoff little like gag episodes of anime that you get every now and again. Yeah, it's a lot like that, except uh, like it act like a proper gag anime. It like does funny shit where it goes like gets super detailed. It has a lot of uh, ooh, ooh. it does that really cool thing where it's able to switch between different art styles very well, um, in order to emphasize the tone of a specific scene. The speed, the weight, the action—it's all or well choreographed. Expressions, like, um, they really do get expressive. Like I, one of my favorites is like when uh, this part where he gets where he gets kicked in the balls, but <laughs> just like, you just the face goes from normal to just. <laughs> I thought you were going to bring up uh, the fight against Mad Dog, where his face is like, are you serious right now? And it just goes super detailed. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, those are also yeah. prime. <laughs> There's everything about, um, what, what's the best way to put it? Like, they they turn up the visual comedy so so high up. It's great. It's perfect. 
I also, so many facial expressions in here that are like so memorable and aren't like generic. Yeah, like very meme worthy faces if I have to say anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. I also appreciate that we're, it's a world where just lot well, okay, not to say logic is out not is out the window is bullshit because there is a method to the madness. But basically, almost every main on ensemble character has some kind of power or technique, and it's all like chi and shit. Like, scissor, like Seven has his trademark scissors, which he can bend through the air. Uh, Levitating Shin just, he, like, he gets creative with it. Yeah, he really does. Um, Wuxia. Um, oh, yeah, we, I guess we do have to mention that. It's very Wuxia. Yeah. Uh, what what else? Um, um, my favorite yeah. is the uh, the kind of Bruce Lee looking guy with the square face, and his uh, his technique. I can't believe Seven I forgot day his hold. <laughs> yes, like. Oh, you also mentioned like meme worthy. They do actually make reference to like old like two thousands era memes. Back like when it was stuff. back when memes were more innocent. But yes, He De Chun, the uh, tan guy right there. His whole thing is like. He has, like, as Robo said, he has a hole that's like, sorry, I cannot let go of you for a full seven days. And you just get a little montage of Seven going about his week. He's like, why haven't you let go yet? He's like, it's only been four days. That's also another thing we talk about, the humor. It's very... Okay, I actually did watch a video. Another, uh, I mean, the act. I did watch a review of someone who knows more about, like, uh, Chinese humor and whatnot. Uh, I think his name is Ku Ch Lane or something. I'll, I'll, when I upload this to YouTube, I'll definitely leave a link to his stuff. Uh, what? Are you saying Kuchalane or Kook? Or yes, that actually? one. That one. The first one. I think that's it. Yeah, Kook Cullen. Yeah, so he's, he's a dude on YouTube that does a lot of Dongwa stuff. That's where I kind of learned some of the basic stuff here. But yeah, it's all very kind of slapsticky, but also very... Very much juxtaposing of itself. Like, there's a montage in the first episode where Seven has to sharpen his skills as an assassin by uh, deheading a fish with a big butcher's knife. Oh, no, 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 remember? First, it's first it's a cat. Oh, first it was a cat, then it was a fish, then it was a worm that he didn't even attempt. He ended up cutting himself on his finger. We also can't forget his trial of using his scissors to swipe the hair of a newly wed bride. Remember? Um, the wedding? No, Why can't I, I have a happy slice? What I was gonna so, say was... <laughs> he's cutting the groom's hair instead. Uh, Why don't I have no memory? <laughs> oh, okay, so... Fuck, I was gonna say comes to like timing this show's co comedic timing is fucking incredible it's snappy as all hell it's great for like 11 minutes goddamn well 11 to like six minutes that's another thing you can blast through this entire show in like an hour hour 30 minutes tops because like like that's the thing with donghua a lot of them aren't made for TV distribution. They wind up on streaming services over there, like Tencent and a bunch of other stuff that I can't remember the name of because I'm not as familiar with. Yeah. But, like, because of because they don't have that limitation on them, they can do whatever they want. And uh, you really feel, get a good feel for that. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes you don't need to spend 30 minutes. You can get your story done in, like, 10 or 6 like, oh, Last Man in Crisis Young did this perfectly. Well. I'm thinking about, no, I'm thinking about Crisis Young. Yeah, they did. Yeah, Crisis Young. God. That's... Oh, I, oh shit, I should have mentioned this at the top. We got, uh, Actually, I, don't, I don't mean to go off on another tangent when we're trying to talk about Scissor 7. But we got noticed by Bobby Pills. Yeah, it's great. Fuck it. We're, uh, we're kings. Um, we're kings. Kings, kings and shit. Oh, wow, that's an old meme. Never mind. Oh, okay. oh yeah, let's not touch that one. We were noticed. We were validated. Well, you were. I was like, oh, I figured this would happen. Uh, okay. I just so, hope they don't take offense to my Frenchman joke. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, okay, so. Okay, back to the show. Uh, what else can we talk about before getting into spoilers? 
Because that's when wow. we, we got to talk about some of the other characters, like 13. So the did kind of get fucked towards the end because they, they, uh, they really ramped up the final battle really, really quickly. Well, that's another thing I learned from uh, Chuchule... Well, how do you say your name again? Kukalan. Kukalan's review. Uh, yes. Apparently there is a... Well, I'm not sure if it was specifically the order or just how he suggested it. But like he gave a specific order to watch the episodes in, and we just we just blasted through them in one sitting because yeah, I know that I shouldn't, and I'm missing out on stuff by not watching it in the right order. But like I'm lazy, man. Sometimes I gotta take that was, L and just. It was a subjective right order, mind you. Well, I'm not sure. I might have to look back at his video, but we just blasted through this at first. But I think it's like the Crisis Young situation where maybe if I watch it in a certain way. It, everything might hit differently. Maybe. But uh, as I mentioned, we watched this on Netflix, and it actually has an English dub, which I did not expect. And uh, I thought the dub was pretty good. I know yeah, we were yeah. watching it for a while with the original Chinese vocals, but I feel well, I like... the whole thing in Chinese. Yeah. But your I man... The first... Um... I like the first half. Oh, you, you first, you first, sorry. Yeah, but you also, but the dub cast also has your man in it. Ronnie Cheng or whatever. What was his name? Ronnie Cheng, you fuck. Oh, so I was right, shit. And how did you feel about his performance as Seven? It's fucking great, I loved it. I will admit, sometimes he did fall a little flat. Like, how? Yeah, he did. Like, uh, can I live us do a good voice of his? Probably not. It's interesting, because, like, uh,. Uh, you do watch we did watch some of the show in the original Chinese and I will say some of the voices are kind of yeah. better like Dai Bao like oh, I loved his oh, go ahead. I loved his English voice just as much as his Chinese voice but I will admit the Chinese one did have a nice gruffer like harder sound to it that I felt added uh, to the character it's a lot less awkward uh, hearing it in the original Chinese because like you know Chinese voice actors know how to match up with the way things work for a Chinese show. Yeah. Uh, English voice actors had a lot more work to, to do, and it was sometimes it hit, sometimes it didn't. And boy, when it didn't, it really didn't. We also watched with subs on, and I think they just translated the Chinese subs for into yeah, English yeah. because they were very stilted. Like, let me put, let me give an example just off the top of my head. Like, uh, let me just give a test phrase. Aha! My okay. First, I'm gonna give you an example of how it would have been written in the English dub. <clears throat> huh, this guy's pretty tough. I really gotta think outside of the box on this one. But in the Chinese, but in the sub, it was like he's tough. I need to think harder about this. Like, I'm again. I'm assuming they just translated the Chinese subs, and it. Did, I will admit, this is a case where I do feel like the dub did oomph it up a bit, where it was. Felt where I felt like it was doing its rightfulness. You know where like we did we talked about this when we were watching it itself. You know how sometimes an English dub can punch up, but also add unnecessary bullshit. Yeah, like any dub in any language, like Mexican dub is for any fucking movie or show. Yeah, or The Simpsons. They put in a lot oh. of crazy shit. Like they mentioned Dragon Ball. They mentioned Mazinger Z. Dude, and fucking. It's, uh, look, sometimes the ghost stories dub <coughs> is a trash idea. Uh, but some, there's at least one or two okayish jokes from that. Yeah, like the Lupin Red, uh, Red Jacket dub. That one's, uh, okay. Would I suggest everyone does that all the time? No! No. I think it I really, de like I think it depends on the show, what it's going for, and the quality of the dub writer. You know, if I'm being quite honest, like, so long as the option is there for me to listen to the original track with, like, subtitles or something, or, you know, I learn the actual language, I personally don't give a fuck, but... Yeah, that was something I will say about my attempts at looking at watching Donghua. A lot of it is hard to keep up with because Chinese as a language, and I guess Taiwanese, uh, Thai, uh, Mandarin, it's... They, it's one of those languages where they manage to pack in a lot of information into short sentences... Oh, yeah. So that's kind of why I prefer, why I was so happy that there was an English dub for this. Because, you know, I don't, if I have to read subs, I, I'll do it. Because I've done it for a lot of anime I like, like Otoko Juku, which that's never coming out in English. But it's like, oh, man, it's hard to, it really, man, Mandarin hits hard, you know? 
I know, I'm learning it. Yes, and maybe one day we'll finally be able to crack those KOF Manwa. Crack you, bitch. <sighs> you have to drink your tea. Yes. I should also mention that we only watched season one. There is a second season, and a third one is on the way. Uh, no watch. idea when that's going to come out, though, because uh, season two actually came out pretty fast, but I think it hit before uh, things got really bad, if you catch my drift. Well, yes, the virus, we know. You don't have to straight up say it, man. Come on. Who cares? Now, an important thing to note here is that we will do an episode for the second season. Just That's not right. Immediately. Uh, actually, I want—I have an idea that I want to share with you after the podcast, not to spoil a future topic. It's okay. I'll spoil it later. Don't worry. But uh, yeah, uh, we're talking about season one, and I guess let's see. We've talked about the animation. We've talked about. We gave a basic summary of the plot, the music, character animation. Uh, oh, we haven't talked about the characters yet. We'll do that when we spoil shit. Yeah, I guess so. So, uh, now is your last warning to get the fuck out of here if you haven't seen Sister 7 yet. What the fuck are you doing here anyway, motherfucker? Well, oh, come on. I mean, you can tell someone about a show and not spoil stuff, but this is the part <laughs> don't of... Worry. Yeah, don't worry, it's a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. to uh, any of the Dong Ho server people in here, we, <laughs> we, we, really like, we really love our ribs, don't we? Baby back. Oh, so you watch? Oh, so you've been watching Being the Elite too, huh? No, I just remember that line from Austin uh. Powers too about eating mini me. Oh, I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. Oh, I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. Chili, baby back ribs, baby back ribs. <laughs> the way he just delivers that kills me every time. But uh, okay, for reals though, we're getting into spoiler territory here, so uh. Cover your virgin ears if you haven't watched season one yet. What's a virgin? All right, I'm giving you a countdown of five, four, no, three, virgin. two, one. We're in spoiler territory. Let's get wild. I like an oil. Spoiler okay, territory? Can we talk about how the ore thing in the island... It can we just say that it's basically a fucking water-bound Angel, Angel Island? I, I resisted making the joke when we were watching it, but... You're right! You're absolutely Fucker. right. I, uh, I guess we should back up a bit. So, okay. See the visual on the uh, screen? See the guy in the cloak in the background? He's from the island of Stan. Yeah, it's Bill Gates. So basically, in the world of uh, Seven, there's three factions of people. People who believe in Kung Fu and the spirit, uh, and the human spirit in Chi. Uh, the technologically advanced people known as the Stan, even though they have a picture of fucking uh, Einstein on there. And then there's the commoners who just can't do shit. They're just fucking stuck there. But you gotta sit back and watch all of everybody blowing each other up. Yeah. So. Ch the story takes place on Chicken Island, which... I, it's like a safe haven from just staying out of the way of the big confrontations out of it, you know? Uh, by the way, and do you want to know what Albert Einstein's Chinese name is? Go for it. Stan. What? Al Yin Stan, if I'm doing that right. Oh my god, that's another fucking pun, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. I'm so glad you're here to tell me all of this. I just looked it up. Because I know uh, Chinese doesn't... What they, don't, what they don't do is they don't try to automatically... They try to, like, transliterate it. They don't uh, translate it directly when it comes to uh, non-Chinese names. Mm-hmm. So you get cool shit, like... Uh, <laughs> uh, hang on, let me think. For Italy, it's called Idali. Uh, and so on and so forth. Mm. I, like, I'm not going to... So it's shit like the, um, in Kikaider where it's Gemini is supposed to be how it's pronounced Gemini. That's Gemini, so wrong. Gemini circuit. Yeah, but they're actually, like, that's how you actually say that word in Japanese, okay, though. We're, okay, we gotta stop tangenting, come on. Sorry. So basically, we get, uh, we really do get straight into the plot right from the get-go. In terms of the Stan sto side storyline. So, he's literally named the Prince of Stan, by the way, so we'll just call him Stan for short. 
Yeah, he wants to come to the island. He wants to take the ore. And at the same time, he might have tie He has ties to seven. But then there's also eleven. The chicky in the background there. So as we learn more and more about seven himself, we learned that. As 8 said in the get-go, he is an amnesiac, and we learned that he, too, was a highly skilled assassin. Admittedly, we don't learn too much about that. That's, we learn more about that in Season 2, which we will watch on our, which we will watch together soonish, or after this, if you guys want. And, uh, I gotta say, I, I love this show. I really do, but, um, I don't have exactly have a problem with it, but... It really does take a Wuja s a hard Wuja s turn, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how do you feel about it? Like, I'm fine with it. Like, I, I kind of like. Love it. Well, I I kind of like just the average, of, like, just the average. There's a I came up with some kind of phrase to describe this kind of aesthetic. But I kind of like that. You like that what? like that modern day aesthetic yes yeah, like the townie i guess we call it the townie vibe you know fucking you got cuneo and you're in your running around town beating thugs up going on adventures just fucking around on an island is yeah. uh, what i would say like seven the, the doing the most you didn't want it to get really like high stakes really fast you just wanted some time to like chill for a bit you know yeah again because yeah, it's nice when it's like when it actually goes somewhere you're like oh fuck we're getting all our answers but for a show like this in this specific format i don't know maybe you maybe you got a little too uh little too uh loosey goosey here uh boyos we, like, well, then remember, again this might this could also be the problem of when something gets uploaded to netflix and it's just all one big dump instead of seeing things week by week or whatever yeah, the binge uh, side. The binge of, uh, format. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's fine, but other times, like this is why stuff like actually, B Stars kind of fizzles out in terms of the fandom. Unless it was for the manga. Now that you mention it, actually, it's a lot. Uh, in that case, it would probably be a lot better for them to have paced things out so that that way it feels like uh, it, it has a satisfying pace to it once you're done with it. And in that regard, might I also add, um, when it does rush things along towards the end, it, you can fucking feel it because they uh, really do amp up. The, just there is a. What was the name of the bodyguard? Uh, Hadi Chun. Okay, so Hadi Chun. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, okay, so when he shows up, Hadi Chun. I, I should mention it. I'm bad with Chinese names. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So he shows up, right? <laughs> and then the exact episode he shows up in. Is the is like? Oh yeah, they get fucking see. attacked by a missile two from minutes. Stan. What is it, like two minutes in? Two uh, like the last two minutes, minutes like, of the episode. Yeah, it's like a hard like, yeah, just a hard cut at the last you know, final act. Coming, it's like bam, rocket coming right at you. Like uh oh, time to make my heroic sacrifice. And it just bleeds right in, and like it kind of does set up the that we're now in the end game. But maybe it's just maybe it's just things of how they tell stories in China and such. Probably not. But foreshadowing wise, it's it has. You know, like they do a, well, they do a better job foreshadowing with uh, Seven's assassin history because like, yeah, we get more into it in season two, which I feel is a good, like that's good general pacing for that storyline. We don't need to learn about it all of it in the first season or whatever. I'm pretty yeah. sure if if they do this right, if we go back after watching the other se uh, the later seasons and see like what they leave b uh, behind in terms of like breadcrumbs, well, yeah, it'll make sense. But maybe it'll maybe hit a little harder. Um, that said though, uh, they leap, they like dangle the plot thread about Stan in front of you, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. I don't know why that'll be relevant immediately yet, uh, or like what Seven's got to do with it. And then towards the end, it's like, bam, here's your answer. And you're like, whoa, holy shit. Mm -hmm. Buckle up. Yeah, fuckle up. Robo, yeah, you got anything to say? Um, fuck. Um, well, I thought the ending, yeah, I thought it paced itself fairly nicely. Um, it would have been nice to have one or two more offbeat episodes to kind of show us more on the island, or like you said, the kind of daily life kind of thing before we head right into it. Um, I will hope 
is there any more of those types of episodes going into season two or does uh, it just go we do get a little bit of that and i guess we do get some minor building when we get to the ovas i mean the onas oh right uh the main season is season one is 10 episodes but there are four bonus episodes one's about uh one of the uh other assassin characters 11 and how she kind of trained herself to be a badass after she got neglected by daddy and the other three are issues <laughs> and another and the other three are about Dai Bao and Chao Fei and how like what led them to be the duo and how they got to the island and stuff oh the Dai Bao and Xiao Fei episode holy fuck episodes. that fight was intense episodes episodes like holy fuck that 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 fight between who was he the king of chickens yeah, the King of Chickens. The fight against the King of Chickens was so goddamn good. Yeah, both fights when... even. Oh yeah, when Wei Oh wait, I'm sorry. When... King Pheasant is his name. Sorry. Yeah, and then we got a uh, what's this? And then we got the CC Tiger. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so during the so during their matchup, uh, we find out that Pheasant's been juicing like it's Pride FC. <laughs> you know what they say, boys. If everyone's juicing, no one well, actually, is. no. If only one guy's juicing and no one else is, everyone is. If everyone's juicing, who's gonna know? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Dub. Uh, damn it! Am I saying his name right? Shit. All right, Daibao takes the juice and sticks it himself, and he goes cray. And uh, goes yeah, straight up Mazako Yusuke. <laughs> and yeah, like straight up, he gets like this tiger strike. So I'm like. <gasps> This might be a sea tiger reference, cause it's Chinese made. <laughs> oh, that made me so happy. So actually, let's talk about the characters now. Who is your favorite? Seven. Uh, yeah, it's between Daibao and Seven. I I really like their dynamic of Seven himself just being. Uh, he's in a bit of a goofball, but then he can get he the still job comes done. through. Yeah. And then you have Daibao just trying, just kind of being a surrogate father to roll to him. It was, it was, it was really nice. I, I really enjoyed it. Also, Seven with his hair down looks fucking badass. Uh, I kind of like, like the, he, I like the chicken scratch ponytail to be honest. The ponytail's good, but like I love me my hair down badass looks, yeah. kind of like that. You guys know me. Yeah, I think in terms of main cast characters, I, it, I, hmm, God, it really is a toss-up between Die Bow and Seven. But I think my favorite of just the general characters, like, just throughout the entire cast, is Hide Chun. The bodyguard. Just, Man I'm sorry. Quick wall. Sorry, but that fucking, the solid as gold seven-day lock. Just, God, that's it. Got it's. I it, it just gets over so good. His whole fight was also really I, I, it's like whole. His whole Simple, but it was a fun him. Hollywood style fighting. They called it. Then just like seven, just trying to add, trying to show off, but then he just constantly denying him and then he just tries going through. What was the part where he just like went in through the water, but then boom, he's right there. Yeah. Ah, uh, good shit. And also, the fight scene parts where they just like they go. They just the get animation loose. just goes. Yeah, yeah. Like we'll just make this the background basic, it's basic a flat shapes, color. But then we're just gonna go ham on that animation. It's they gonna be so goddamn crazy and fluid. They really did. Like holy damn, <laughs> shit looking like um. This is Virtua Fighter 32X, but with... <laughs> Ouch. But in a good way, in a good way. Let's see. Who else was I... Who else, who else was really good? Let's see... Uh, hmm. I thought Captain Jack was a fun, just minor antagonist. This One Piece looking motherfuck. I was gonna say, he kinda looked like, um, Frankie from One Piece. Oh wow, he kind of does. It's the face and the hair. 
All he needs is big, even more beef and two big mechanical arms. Well, no, first arms. of all, he needs to start out as a beefy guy with Popeye arms. Then he needs to become a robot somehow. And he needs to keep going down that path until he's all robot. Exactly. Who? What episode had your favorite fight scene? For me, it was the one uh, with Seven against Chairman Jiang. The lady who was a part of the, uh, I guess, the... The chairman of Island Priority Society, where they fight the guy who's been stealing everyone's underwear. Yeah, and he turns into Bubsy 3D in the background. That's insulting. Come on. In the background. It was neat. Yeah, again, it's a perfect example of how, like Robo said, they'll just, the ba they'll just say, fuck the background, just focus on the fight. Because that's where it's really all about. Background looking like Virtua Fire 32X. The, the characters themselves looking like an Arc Systems fighting game. Yeah. But um, if I had to choose my favorite, it had to be the bodyguard episode. I'm sorry, I forgot his name he for this one. And uh, eight against eight Chung. And oh man, just the whole craziness between that. The final episode also had some great stuff, and I have to also shout out to that last episode with, um, or, no wait, the episode with the panties and such for the part where the lady straight up does some freaking Super Brutoden bullshit. Yeah. Throw it back at him. Oh man, wasn't there another part where it was some Super Brutoden bullshit in there too? They really go ham on the... Chief fighting in later episodes. It really does feel like Dragon Ball. Or that one manhwa written by Andy Sato that's just all Dragon Ball and partially a movie about gambling. What's the <laughs> name, Prince? God of Gamblers. Who made it? Andy Sato. Who you might remember from all the crazy KOF comics from around the 2000s. Let's see. What time are we at now? Oh, damn. We're about... We're about... At, we're at about an hour. Uh, let's see. What else can we talk about? I think we can go on one more topic and then just call it for tonight. Uh, what was your favorite emotional moment from the series? Because they really do hit hard on the feels. Um... Uh, the part with the little girl where she's just helping her finish up her bucket list um, before she assassinates her and because she has cancer. But then at the end, oh, I'm gonna here's this here's this doctor. He he can cure anything, and that was really sweet. Just seven, just helping her, helping her out and shit. That was adorable. Yeah. But another one was also I had to say, uh, what was the name of the rival girl again? Uh, 13. 13. She, how, how we actually see her in the OVA, how she became a badass, and how she lost her mother and all that, and also then she, how she learned how to do the whole thing with her hair, tying around in the ponytail, and then sticking a knife to the back of it. Oh, man. That was sick. Yeah. Well, let's not forget the best sacrifice of um, Dai Bao, we're just tanking that missile like a man. That was Hidei Chun. Hidei Chun, sorry. I will say, so just... Dafei, Dafei, oh god, my heart hurts for him. He really got done dirty in that fight against he got King Pheasant. Destroyed, but he uh, he gave it his all. And uh, yeah, Dambo or Daibo. Fuck, I forget which one. Daibo is the is the one that's still alive. Dafei uh, was the one who died in the ring. And Zhao Fei is the baby. Well, oh, the part where he's just, he doesn't, he holds off on killing King Pheasant just so that Zhao Fei doesn't have to worry about having that kind of trauma. Aww. Yeah. <sighs> a true G. Everyone in this show's a fucking G. And I think we're reaching the end of our podcast, wouldn't you say? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, let me just get the outro to So yeah, that's our podcast for this week. Again, I know I was kind of lazy with the visuals, but it was a good. I was bound to have one of these episodes, anyways. 
Let's be real here. But hopefully, hopefully we got you all to check out a new show on Netflix. Remember, season one and two are up. This is not a, oh, I should have mentioned, not an advertisement. Not an advertisement. We're just suggesting this on our own volition. Yeah, Nikki, you think we're getting paid for this shit? I wish. I don't. All right, so, because then I wouldn't be able to shit on the dub. Oh, come on, the dub wasn't that bad. It wasn't, but, like, that was a bit, and you fell for it. Oh, okay, yeah, so. Really. All right, the music's playing. We got to finish up. Our so. thoughts, bitch. I cannot wait for season three, and I need to find more cool dong while to watch. Good, good. Robot, your final thoughts? Love and wise seems thus far. Can't wait to see season two. And, um... Hurry up, we're almost at the end. Good shit, good shit. All right, and now my final thoughts is as such. Woo! Lint! Woo! Lint! Woo! Lint! Woo! Later, everyone! Woo! Lint! Woo! Lint!